Welcome back to Let's Play Picnic Panic, the DLC chapter for The Messenger. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we now pick up right where we left off. This is the third attempt since the jump cut. Corbel has just informed me I've been saved 472 times, so thank you. How powerful is the Dark Messenger, anyway? How much hell or health he has than me? I mean, I've seen footage of uh, Mike Tyson's punch out. Play it, incidentally. I'm just saying that I'm aware in that game that you're a boxer who's like a quarter the physical size of the opponents, so it makes sense that they're just beating the shit out of you whenever they land a punch, but uh... I'm a fucking robot, man. down and then immediately get another one with the uh, special move. Nah, fuck it. figure out what button he does to do that. Suck it! No! My organs! Fight. Just keep walking, fuckhead. I'm building up my meter. No, I got this! Come on! Come on! Get him! Hell yes! Kamehameha. <laughs> nice callback. Ah, satisfying! And he's breathing heavily. It... it worked! <laughs> uh? The voodoo energy is finally loose and ready to be absorbed! Wait, what? What is he on about? Didn't we just knock this guy out? Behold, as the magic seed ripens before your very eyes! Whoa, I want a seed like that. I can deal with whatever you have to throw at me, demon. Oh, you won this round, 
messenger, but I will return. Ooh, that's... Is that unfinished business for the DLCs that are probably not actually going to make? I mean, I haven't heard them say that we're not going to do it. It's just, you know, they're working on a different game and they're a small team, so... Well, this takes care of that. Oh, I can't wait to see... Oh, that's not the right voice. Oh, I can't wait to see what he does with the seed! What should he do in the meantime? <clears throat> Could you maybe get us out of here? It's about time we had that picnic. We're starving! Yes, let's all go to the picnic! Yay! Thank you for joining us at the picnic. Aww. That's lovely. <laughs> uh. Oh, thanks for the invite. This is amazing! That fight was so sick! We should do the thing again sometime! Achievement unlocked. Now that's a finale! Defeated the Demon General. Again. If you ever need to measure anything, you can use me. From the bottom of my shoes to the tip of this tape, I measure exactly 112 centimeters. Oh, that's nice. They all have different tools this time. I think they all had shovels last time. Unless I just really wasn't paying attention, which is always possible with me. Is it true you have to leave soon? Voodkin Island is so much fun! Phew, what an adventure. Yeah, we only organized this picnic because we wanted permission to drink little juice boxes. Totally worth it in the end. <laughs> this party isn't bad, but I'll need to get back to my lab soon. Let me know when you're ready. Hello, my friend. So, you said you would tell me a story after everything was resolved. Oh, yeah, I suppose I did. You want to hear a story, then? Yes. Alright, here's one for you. It's a story about a story. Or, more precisely, about a friend of mine's relation to it. Here we go. There once was a little girl who had a favorite fairy tale. She couldn't get enough of it. Every week, she wanted to hear it again. And much like the dysfunctional patterns we recreate in our lives, I bet part of her was hoping that by listening to the same story endlessly, its ending would eventually change. Because, you see, she only truly liked the first half of that fairy tale. It went something like this. Once upon a time, there lived a monstru monstrous beast in a castle who kept a farmer prisoner in his dungeon. One day, the farmer's daughter went to the beast's castle to offer herself as a prisoner in exchange for her father's freedom. Oh, I know this story. Well, at least the beginning of the story. The farmer being quite a selfless dad, and the beast being quite a res reasonable bully... What? No. The farmer being quite a selfless dad, and the beast quite a reasonable bully, everyone instantly agreed. At first very scared and put off by the beast's appearance, she quickly learned to look past the surface and became quite, became quite fond of him. Far from being a blatantly romanticized case of Stockholm Syndrome, <laughs> her feelings towards him grew into genuine love. Yeah, that's a uh, common complaint. People point at the Beauty and the Beast movie, in case you uh, didn't pick up on that. But the Beast, as it soon turned out, was actually a beautiful prince who had had the misfortune of being turned into a monster by an evil witch. A spell which could only be broken by receiving a kiss from his true love. The power of this relationship helped him reconnect with the good within him, and his past as a captor was never revisited or brought into question after he became the farmer's son-in-law. They all lived happily ever after. The end. Everybody knows that one. Of course, but remember, it's about my friend. She didn't like the story so much past a certain point. Why do you think that is? Maybe she thinks beasts are cooler than humans? That's a fair guess. All she told me is that she didn't like the prince's voice anymore once he was returned to his human form. But she's a clever one. I can't shake the feeling that part of her thought uh, it didn't really make sense. That someone who had the depth and maturity to look past the surface would receive a reward as superfluous as good looks. Or maybe that's where the whole deal became awfully suspicious. If you think about it, there is always something sketchy about apparent perfection. Maybe the appearance of a beast showcasing hideousness so openly at least offers the security of letting you know what you are in for. A trait so evident and so repulsive it could only be uphill from there for the one who would take a closer look. Or as of the perfect front, all that is left is to slowly deconstruct this perfection by slowly noticing flaws. 
It is a rare and valuable thing for people to look past the surface, so why would it make sense to, to offer them something shallow and material in response? I find it to also convey a very important message. A message you need to pay close attention to, to note it. What? A, a message you need to pay close attention to notice, but which is nonetheless written everywhere between the lines. Contrast carries beauty. The colorful shirt of the introvert. The pack of watermelon bubblegum in the old lady's purse. The melodic background harmonies of the death metal song. Hmm. The cute earrings of the stone-faced. The smell of dust kicking up when sudden rain combines with the bright sun on a hot summer day. While others may benefit from paying attention to more stories, some people perceive these things instinctively. Seeing how curious and captivated you are, I wager you belong to the second group. And when it comes to my friend, sometimes I like to think that to her, a better title for this fairy tale would have been The Beauty in the Beast. Aww. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Oh, don't overthink it. It's just my special way of saying... What? That's, I don't know what language that is. My apologies. Zikuj to that little girl. Hopefully she enjoyed this more than if I had sung Happy Birthday to her. And as to you, Messenger, I hope that in the end you won't think your adventure would have been better without a bonus tropical side quest. <laughs> anyway, vacation's over. I should go and pack now. See you on the A side. Yeah, I guess I will leave Voodkin Island. Nice. This is one of the weirder credit sequences I've been through. I'm not reading any of that, I'm so sorry. Oh, that was in the air. <laughs> Why would you put this here? I'm ignoring all of the people's names. Ubisoft Quebec. I caught that one, you're welcome. Meanwhile, atop the searing crags. Oh, A. Oh no. Yo, it's kinda crazy, Kolos, this new diet made me so flexible. Oh right, alternate universe, I think. I think? They didn't actually go through the, uh, the portal yet. So I see, Sue says. To think we were relying on brute strength alone for all this time. We should train more assiduously, Sue says. I agree completely, Kolos. For Mathazel. Good day to you, Cyclopses. I'm trying to remember, there, that isn't the actual... Cyclope? I don't know. I don't remember what it is. Are you waiting for someone, Sue says? I have no idea who's under that cloak, Kolos. State your business, Wanderer! Pardon the intrusion. I was looking for experienced botanists, and rumor has it you two are the best this island has to offer. Uh, they starved to death waiting for their botanies at... Uh, Yo, this guy's correct, Kolos. Let's see what he wants, Sue says. What's it to you, Wanderer? See, I have come across a very rare magic seed, which, given proper care, is bound to grow into a beautiful plant. Huh? What do you reckon, Kolos? We gotta see that seed, Sue says. You have our attention, Wanderer, show us! With pleasure. Here. Did I forget to mention that we'll give herbs that can be used for... Cooking? <gasps> we are so planting the seed, Sue says. Cowabunga, Kolos, what could go wrong? Say no more, Wanderer, we will grow the magic seed! Well, that was fun. Yeah, I must admit I'll miss the beach. So, yes? Will the adventure continue sometime later? That's not up to me. 
Feel free to replay Picnic Panic as many times as you want, though. I guess I start over. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, oh. Hmm. Well. I kind of wasn't expecting to hit it so soon, but, uh... I guess I should have, since it's a free DLC chapter and all. But here we are at the end! And, uh... What an ending it is. In the future, they might, you know, actually go back to the Messenger and do those DLCs, or maybe they'll continue that storyline in The Messenger 2. I haven't the slightest idea, and, you know, like the shopkeeper said, it's not up to me either. But I'll tell you this. If and when this story gets continued, Guy Dan and I will be there. And I hope you'll join us for it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't feel I did my outro very well, so I wanted to give it another shot. Before I did that... Godspeed, Artificer! I just wanted to say that. Okay. Uh, I didn't really get into the details when I w beat the main game, so... I thought this game absolutely nailed it. I thought that, uh... The challenge was appropriate, the, uh... The things they asked you to do were very difficult, but never impossible. I felt like the control was exactly what it needed to be to make this all fair. And that was another thing. Every time I die in this game, it felt like... Well, it felt like I screwed up. It felt like I was, uh... Making a mistake and not, well, this game cheats. I mean, there were a few times where I had no idea why I died, but, you know. Uh, I liked the fact that every level was completely different looking. You can tell at a glance where a screenshot is. Quite a lot of stuff going on. Oh, I forgot about that. I wasn't sure if it would be there when I went back to the main. Yeah, I guess so, to show you the uh, collectibles you didn't get. Oh, uh, I wanted to mention a thing about that, actually. Uh, I was corrected by Ronan Drake. The hardcore mode you unlock? I didn't know this at the time, but uh, apparently you play as the Dark Messenger. Who, uh... And it's not just hardcore mode. Uh, in addition to only getting one life, you also have double the maximum life, and you do double damage with every swing. Or maybe with every shuriken, I don't know. He just said double life and double damage, so, you know. That's very interesting. I wanted to correct that. Um, the soundtrack, of course, is sublime. I have mentioned this over and over again. I don't think there was a single track in this game I genuinely didn't like. I didn't think the tracks in Picnic Panic were quite up to the level of the main game, but they were still good. Um... I do feel like the writing got a bit distracting at times with how fixated it was on trying to trick the player and get one over on them. Like, I kind of got the impression <laughs> the game was written by someone who is very, very proud of how clever they are. Maybe a little too proud. Um, you know, because it's constantly setting up things that play with the assumptions you have based on what a video game is like. And, uh, then, oops, nope, we, uh, we had you fooled. No, the time loop doesn't work that way. No, that's not what messengers are for. 
You know, like, there was dialogue that was very specifically designed to make you think, for example, that I was the first messenger who ever reached the top of the, uh, the mountain, you know. Of all the messengers. Him? I don't know. Uh, I just feel like the, uh... The focus on red herrings may have, uh... Been about as close as this game gets to a flaw. <laughs> maybe that's just me. Or hey, maybe I'm just not clever enough for the, uh... The game. I love the character interactions, though. I gotta say that. They absolutely nailed it. Every character has a distinct personality, even though it's you know, none of it is voice acted. And, uh... I had a great time, you know, getting out there and be meeting these weird people who help me along my journey, or try to end it, depending on who they are. And all the little details! <laughs> like the fucking, uh, little mill at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Just a small, almost unnoticeable call- like, I didn't notice it until I was going over the footage, is the funny thing. Or no, that's what it was. I didn't notice it until I had to redo the bit. Yes. Yes, because that was the episode that opened uh, with me having lost the progress from the end of the previous one. Um, just doing laps at this point. I will say that this game was a lot harder than I was expecting it to be. But, uh... At almost every point, I felt like the challenge was entirely fair. Honestly, it probably wouldn't have been as hard as it was for me if I had been able to, you know, get a better grasp on the, uh... on the rope darts in mid-air. I'm kind of surprised that I didn't eventually click in the way cl uh, cloud stepping did. And, uh... Those are yes. All things considered, yeah. I recommend this game. If you're into Metroidvanias, if you're into, you know, platforming challenges, if you're into ninjas, I don't know. This is absolutely a game that will put a smile on your face. Oops. Ahem. But, uh... I'll say this. I am really looking forward to seeing what this uh, developer does next. I'll be keeping an eye on Sea of Stars, and you had best believe I will be keeping an eye out for more news of The Messenger. Let's finish this in here with my friend. Okay. Before we, uh, you know, finish this for reals, I do want to say one thing, and that is that, once again, I'd like to give a very special shout-out to my good friend Ronan Drake for gifting me this game and making this whole messenger journey possible in the first place. Not a bad collection, get it during how expensive they are. Yes! I didn't know what to expect when I came on this journey, and I'll admit it made me angry at times, but I had a fantastic time with it overall, and I'm incredibly proud of myself for doing it. I mean, I even got the, uh, the chest open over here. And in case it wasn't clear earlier, I didn't get all of those power seals because I felt obligated to, simply because they were there, I got each of them because I thought I could get them. When does that ever happen in a game with collectibles? <laughs> <sighs> I got tongue-tied on the very last bit. Go figure. I'm Burning Dog Face, and on behalf of myself, Guy Den, the shopkeeper, Quarble, the Blue Robes, and all of the other weird and wacky characters who helped me along my way, I thank you for joining me for Let's Play the Messenger. And Let's Play Picnic Panic.
Which I recommend too, by the way, but since it's free, I figure that's a given. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this journey. The sights and sounds you've gotten to see and hear. And I hope you'll join me for my next video series. Till then, have yourselves a great day, Burning Dog fans. Later!